All right, so for the second one, we have that a vertical pole, okay, um, stands on horizontal ground. Okay, so that means that this is perfectly flat, this is perfectly flat. Awesome, beautiful. The bottom of the pole is taken as the origin O. Okay, so this is 0, 0, 0. And la, 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 um, the pole has the coordinates this, which is this. All units are in meters. Okay, so meters is going to help for uh, how I leave my answer. See, we can't forget that. Those are the units in this case. The pole is held in place by ropes attached at F, and one of the ropes is attached to the ground at a point A with the coordinates blah. See, coordinates blah are this blah here. The rope forms a straight line from A to F. So this is a straight line that is also going to be convenient. So for part A, we need to find the length of the rope connecting A to F. Now, before I jump into how to find the distance and all that good stuff, I'm sure a lot of you are like, dude, what the fuck? Why is there three numbers here? I'm used to numbers having just X comma Y. Well, surprise, you have X comma Y comma Z in this case. See? And so I know that that might look a little bit weird. Let me explain what is going on. So usually you have uh, things that are like this. See, you have your X and your Y. What is going to start happening now is that you are going to have your X, your, this is really hard to draw, your Y, and your Z. Okay, so it's something like a little bit 3D. See, so this x, y, you kind of like throw it flat on the ground here, cierto? And you put z that goes straight up. See, so z is now your height, x and y are sort of like your horizontal stuffs, okay? So what is going on here is that your top of the pole, which is the point 0, 0, blah, blah, blah. So here we have f, see? Which is 0, 0, 5.8. And your point a which is 3.2, 4.50, is going to be somewhere here. So you're going to have, uh, I don't know, 3.2 around here, 4.5 around there, and 0. See? So 0 means that it's at 0 height. That means it's a point somewhere around there. See? So that is my, what was it again? 3.2, 4.5, and 0. See? And so here I have a pole, ¿cierto? And I have a rope that goes like this. Okay, and so that is what's going on. And so when the IB says, diagram not to scale, they are not joking. Okay, this diagram sucks. And when you see these three points here, you have to think, okay, I have something that's a little bit 3D, I have the thing that's up here. See, so drawing it, it's probably gonna help you visualize the exercise a little bit. The point is you have this triangle that goes like this, see? And so what do I know about this triangle? What can I figure out? All that good stuff is our next approach. For part A, we need to find the length of the rope connecting A to F. Um, all right, so this is A, there is F, and you find the, you know, that line. See the slanted one. So something that's convenient here is that because we're talking about a length, we are also talking about a distance, see? And so we are looking for the distance between two points. Ah, all right, so if you think of length, the buzzword in this case, and really think of distance, you should be pulling up your formula booklet and going, what the hell is distance? See? So here we have something from HL. We don't give a shit about that. This is between two points. Boom. All right? That helps a little bit. But this is between two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. In this case, I need z. So I keep looking, and boom. There it is. Here I have the distance between two points when I have z in between. See? So that is the formula that we're going to be using for now. Look at that, how convenient, how it shows up. There it is. I'm going to scroll up, make a little bit of space. And that is the formula we're going to use. See, so we have d equals square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared plus z1 minus z2 squared. All right, so this is no different than the other distance formula, just that we have an additional point. So yeah, I mean, an additional thing, like z. See, z is now a thing. All right, so what is z? What is z1? What is z2? What is y1? What is y2? All that good stuff. Um, the only way you can mess up here is being unorganized, see? And so, dude, take your time, right? Like, 
don't make a small mistake that can be solved by something very easy easily write down both of your points that is my first one this is my second one see and then using fancy colors hopefully write that this is your x1 this is your y1 this is your z1 this is your x2 this is your y2 this is your z2 see i know this might seem like a little duh but this way you also make sure that you don't mess up see so applying this to my formula up there i'm going to end up with my distance being equal to the square root of x1 with z0 minus x2 3.2 squared plus y1 which we said was 0 minus y2 4.5 squared finally uh, plus z1 which is 5.8 minus 0 squared see all right so this ends up being square root of negative 3.2 squared plus negative 4.5 squared plus 5.8 squared see all right so put all of this into your calculator and you're going to end up with a distance of 8.00812 all right, this is my answer, but there's one thing wrong with it. Units, my units per meters, see? All right, so that is for part A. So the length of the rope connecting blah, blah, blah from A to F is 8.00812 meters. All right, then now for this next one, we have that we need to find FAO, the angle the rope makes with the ground. So they tell us that we need to find an angle in two ways. First, they say find the angle. Okay? The other way you can figure it out is because when they put it like this, FAO with the little hat, it's saying, hey, find this angle, A, in respects to the sides F and O. So this angle A in respects to the sides F and O. Okay? So that is the angle that we're trying to find. Okay? All right. Um, so what do I know or what can I work with for finding that angle? So trigonometry should be coming to mind when we are working with angles, see? Now, um, when we think of trigonometry, there are three main tools that we have, see? We have sine, we have cosine, and we have the tangent, see? Now sine, cosine, and tangent all have, uh, you know, sort of like nicknames, see? I'm sure you've heard that sine also has so, Cosine also has so ka, and tangent also has so ka blah. See? Now, what the hell is this shit even saying, my guy? It's saying that for sine, you need OH. What is OH? It is opposite over hypotenuse. It's saying that for cosine, you need AH. AH is adjacent over hypotenuse. And OA is going to be opposite over adjacent. See? All right. So, what do I have right now in respects to this angle that can help me figure it out, see? Right now, I only have one side, see? I have this side here, 8.00812. So, what side is that in respects to this angle? Well, looking at my triangle and how it looks like, it would mean my hypotenuse, see? So, right now, I have a hypotenuse. Um, that means I can probably use this one, probably use this other one, but this last one doesn't have hypotenuse, so boom. We're not going to work with tangent, not this time around, see? Now, I need either the opposite or the adjacent, see? All right, unfortunately, I don't have either, see? Opposite would be here, adjacent would be down there, see? So, I need to either find one or the other and work from there, all right? Now, it's, it's your choice, really, which one you find and how you find it and all that good stuff. But for me, it's more intuitively to find all the adjacent, and I'll show you how and why, see? So I go back to my 3D, you know, diagram thing, whatever, and I need to figure out one of the sides, see? So, one thing that I can use immediately, see, is that this point A that I drew before has the X of 3.2 and the Y of 4.5. All right, how does that help me? It helps me because right now I have two right triangles. I have one here and I have one here. 
And so with a little bit of creativity, what you can do is say, ah, so this 4.5 is the same as this 4.5 over here. Boom! Suddenly, you have a right triangle that goes 3.2, 4.5, and what I'm going to call, I don't know, whatever, uh, F. Okay, F is going to be this guy here. See? F, that I just called F. Actually, I should not call it F because F is the point up there. Fuck it, my guy. I'm going to call this smiley face. So smiley face, okay, is the same as this point over there. Which is the same as this side over here. Okay? So all of those are smiley face. See? So how can I find smiley face? Well, because I have a right triangle, see? You should immediately be thinking of the tools that you can use. You have trigonometry, but you also have the Pythagoras theorem. See? Pythagoras theorem says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Ah, beautiful. And so the most important thing in the Pythagoras theorem is identifying well what is my c. And so c is always going to be your hypotenuse. See, that is a fancy math language. Hypotenuse is also going to be hypotenuse is also going to be your the long side. See, all of this are c. So the long side in this case is going to be smiley face. So I'm going to write 3.2 squared plus 4.5 squared equals smiley face squared. See? Okay, so I need to get smiley face alone, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do square root to both sides. What does the square root do? It helps me get rid of the squared. See? Boom. Now smiley face is alone. I just need to plug this into my calculator and see what I get. So I boot it up. I do square root of 3.2 plus 4.5. Oops. I made a mistake there. I need to make sure that they are all squared. So 3.2 squared plus 4.5 squared. All of this square rooted will give me smiley face. Smiley face is indeed 5.52. Let me write it out. 177. All right, so this is going to be smiley face. Okay? So smiley face is 5 points. I just want to make sure my diagram looks nice. 5.52. 177. Alright, so we just found one other dimension of my triangle, one other side. See? So now we come back to this uh, sine cosine thing, right? And so, do I use the one on top or the one on the bottom? Did I just find the opposite or did I just find the adjacent? Let's remember that the opposite to my angle is all the way on the other end. It's, it's not something we have. Okay, so we're not going to use sine. In this case, the winner will be cosine. See, we're going to use adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent we identified is 5.52 and the adjacent, I mean, sorry, the hypotenuse is 8.008. Okay. All right. Remember that this adjacent hypotenuse thing is relative to the angle you're trying to find. See, this 5.52 was the hypotenuse when we were trying to find the side. See, here it was the hypotenuse for finding the side, but it's not the hypotenuse anymore in respect to this angle. See, and so we're going to find angle FAO, we need to work in respect to that. Okay? So angle FAO is going to be cosine of FAO equals my adjacent, which we said was 5.52177, getting divided by my hypotenuse, which was 8.00812. All right, and a lot of people here are confused on what the hell to do next. See? Why do they get confused? Because they're not sure how to get FAO alone. See, there's a cosine next to it. What the hell is going on? Like, what happens? See? Yeah, let me explain it this way. If you have 2x equals 6, and I say, all right, homie, what is the value of x? Well, 2 is multiplying x, cierto? And so you divide by 2 because 2 is multiplying x. Why? Because division is the opposite of multiplication. Division is the opposite of multiplication, x is 3, see? All right, ladies and gentlemen, what is the opposite of cosine? The opposite of cosine is cosine inverse. So I do cosine inverse, and this is the main idea I wanted to share. Cosine inverse of cos 
uh, FAO stays inside, and I still have my fraction on the other side. See? That is a decimal. There is a decimal there. Yeah. See? And so what does cosine inverse do? Well, it makes this guy... Oops, I actually messed something up here. There's a cosine inverse here. What does cosine inverse do? It makes this guy and this guy go away, and I end up with only angle FAO being equal to cosine inverse of this whole thing. So what the cosine inverse does is that when it is next to a cosine, it deletes that cosine, see? And you end up with only what's inside, see? Notice that my angle FAO never left the scene. Whoops, that was an accident. But yes, cosine inverse does not affect what's inside, okay? FAO stayed there the whole time, see? So I'm going to pull up my calculator, do cosine inverse of this stuff, see? So I take this, I divide it by... 8.00812 and I end up with angle FAO being equal to 46.40 uh, we weren't write it out it's there see 7 7 all right and so if we look at my answers key over here just so that we're on the same page that is the answer that you just got see so beautiful there it is. I did want to show something on the answer key, which is relevant for uh, any trigonometry problem. Okay, In trigonometry problems, you usually end up doing weird divisions and end up with very long numbers. See, You need to plug in those long numbers into your calculator in order to get the exact answer. See, If I don't plug in the, um, the long numbers and say I would have done cosine inverse of, say, 5.52 divided by 8.2, Zero, zero, 8. So it's like not exactly exactly the same number. My answer is a little bit different. Okay. On sig figs, it's probably going to end up being the same. It doesn't matter. But I'm just pointing it out. If you're comparing your answers and it's a little bit different, it could be that you're doing that. See? It's just something common. I'd rather bring it up so that no one out there is confused. Ladies and gentlemen, that is for number two.